Hello world! On today's video, I am assembling an X99 build tutorial. For motherboard, I'm using the Asus X99A. For RAM, I'm using the Corsair Dominator 16GB DDR4 running at 2666. For CPU, I'm using the Intel i 7 5820K, bang for the buck. For the GPU, I'm using two Asus GTX 980 SLI configuration. And for the power supply, I'm using the EVGA 850G2 Gold Certified. Let's get into this video. Ok, let's begin. Let's get our motherboard ready first. I'm gonna use the box of the X99A and I'm gonna place my motherboard on top. Next thing that I wanna do is get my 5820K and there is a little arrow that points to the top right corner. Make sure the CPU is nice and firm, then we put the metal plate over, then we are going to apply pressure. Even if it feels like it's gonna break, don't worry about it, it's not. Ok, once we get our CPU in place, it's time for the RAM. This is the procedure that I use every time I build a computer, pretty much it's personal. Some people like to do it the other way. Ok, right here I committed a mistake. I put in the RAM on the wrong dim lanes. You have to use the gray ones on the X99. So as you can see right here, I use the lanes number 2, instead of using lanes number 1. Number 1 is gray and number 2 is the black one. Make sure you do it the right way. The next step that I followed is I put the backplate I.O. of the motherboard into the case. Alright, make sure that all your pre-mounted screws for your motherboard ATX are in place and carefully lay down your motherboard. Be careful not to scratch the back of the motherboard, be gentle when you do it. Make sure you align everything with the back I.O. plate and ta -da, we are ready to go. Time for some screwing time. Ok, the next thing that I do after I get the motherboard into the case, I pre-mount my power supply. It is very important to me to have the power supply so I can start feeding my motherboard. Now I do recommend you to do it this way and I recommend you to face your power supply upwards, that's how I do mine. Now the way I do and build my computers pretty much is personal personal choice, personal way of doing it. I am showing you how I build mine and how you can build yours as well and have them best looking. Now in my case right here I am using a fully 100% modular power supply. So the first thing that I do pretty much is run my uh, 24 pin SATA cable, my uh, CPU uh, 8 pin cable, my graphics card cable, the PCIe, and if I'm doing SLI, I put in two. And also I use my peripherals, I think that's what you call them. It's for your SATA power, you know, like for your for your um, SSDs and for your hard drives. I also connect two four pin uh, SATA cables and I use that for uh, extensions like for my LED lights and for my mods and for whatever. You know how I like to mod my cases and run um, external fan controllers and everything so this is the time that I do it and let's go let's go into plugging everything in okay it's time to unbox the GTX 980 from Asus I'm gonna go SLI configuration I'm gonna use two of these so right here I'm doing the unboxing of one I didn't want to do the second one because why so I'm unboxing one and kind of reviewing the beauty of this graphics card Okay, 
Well, what we want to do next is remove the PCIe slots from the case. Let's get our GTX 980 situated in place and we do the same for the second one. Alrighty, the next step that I want to do is I want to bring the 8-pin CPU power cable to the motherboard. Let's fit it through the back of the case and carefully insert it in place. Sometimes these cables can be a little tricky. The next thing that I want to do is connect the 24-pin power supply to the motherboard. Then, we're going to connect it on the back of the case as well. Alright, the next thing to do is run the power to the graphics cards. Right here I'm running two 6-pin PCIe cables. Let's do the same with the next graphics card. Make sure that all cables are in all the way. After it's done, we're good to go. Ok, at this point we are ready to connect the I.O. connectors. So we start by connecting the USB 3.0. Then we next connect the HD audio. Then the I.O. connectors, including the HD audio, reset button, power button, microphone jack, headphone jack. Connecting the I.O. cables can be a little challenging and it can be annoying. Luckily, I like the way that ASUS give you a header guide where you connect everything first and then into the motherboard. That makes the PC builder lives easier. I still wonder, it's 2015 and people still have to do it this way, cable by cable. That's a little bit um, annoying. Yeah, let's move on into the next part. Alright, Windows is going to live right here on this SSD, 240 gigabytes. Uh, OCZ ARC100. Ok, so it's time to connect our SSD. I'm not going to use the uh, SSD brackets on the back of this case, so I'm just going to put it right here. All you need to build a computer is a little bit of common sense. So pretty much right here, put in your SSD, screw it in, you're good to go. You do the same thing with the hard drive. To store my games and video footage, I am using the blue Western Digital 1TB hard drive, mechanical hard drive. Why do I use it? Because it's cheap, very good price and performs well. So yes, bang for the buck right here. Now for Windows, of course that I use an SSD because I love to boot up in seconds. Alright, let's go ahead and do the cable management for this here, for the hard drive and the SSD. Regardless how many years you got building computers, you have to go to the manual of the motherboard and find out SATA port 1, SATA port 2 and so and so. And the reason why you have to connect the SSD where Windows is going to be installed on SATA port number 1 so the computer, the motherboard boots up to that all the time. And if you connect it the wrong way, well, you're going to have to go to the BIOS configuration and set up the boot mode. So if you want to save yourself some trouble, connect the SATA of the SSD into port number one and the rest you can connect however. Always remember, number one is for your SSD for the boot up. The next step that I take, I connect the SATA cables, the SSD and later the hard drive. Make sure you don't put any pressure on the SATA inputs. As you can see right here, my SATA cable is going to bend. 
I don't want to do that. So what I did, I removed it and I replaced it with another one, an elbow one. Much better. Alright, well, we are at the point where we are ready to power up our hard drives and SSDs. So let's connect the SATA power cables. Make sure it goes all the way in. We do the SSD first, then we do the hard drive. Make sure you bend the cables in a way where you don't put pressure on both. It can easily break. Alright, well, we are ready to do cable management. <laughs> the best thing about building computers. And why do I say that with so much sarcasm? Well, because it takes so much patience, and I am the person that suffers from that, if you know what I mean. Alright guys, well, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this part and enjoy a little bit of music. Alright. Well, after finding out that my Corsair H110i GT from Corsair was leaking, I had to use this other one that I had sitting right here. It's a brand new one. It's a Corsair H100i. Uh, for some odd reason, I lost the footage or I didn't record the footage of me mounting it at the top. But as soon as I realized, I'm like, oh my god, I'm not recording. Where's my head? I was a little sad, I was a little depressed, but here it is. Uh, from here forward, I got footage of everything. So right here, what am I doing? Well, right here, I am mounting the radiator to the chassis of the case. This one right here, like I said, it's a Corsair H100i. And also disappointed by the fact that the Corsair H100i fence really suck, really blow, a lot of air, but at the same time they're noisy and rattling. For this build, for this video right now, I am using the Corsair Air Airflow and one um, Cooler Master. I can't think of the name at the top of my head. But anyway guys, so right here, what am I doing right now? I am mounting the radiator to the chassis. And right now I am also going to install the pump into the CPU. Okay, after installing the pump, it's time for more cable management. Alright guys, after doing that cable management and everything, this is what I do. I cross my fingers and I pray to God that I don't blow up this machine. I mean, it hasn't happened, but one misconnected cable, one wrong connected cable can do a lot of damage. I can tell you that for a fact. Now, right here, guys, if you're asking yourself, Creeper, when did you paint your fence and everything? Well, I pre-painted everything before I did the assembling. So right here, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm like really nervous because this is my first time building an X99 motherboard. So I went ahead and hit the power and I make sure that I'm getting some type of light uh, my hands are sweaty and there it goes there it goes I wasn't audio recording I turn off the light okay of the studio and there it goes it goes into the boot up mode for the first time I'm nervous and it's loading up again okay so this is the first boot up no screen connected anything like that uh, Wow, I can say to you guys that this right here is nervous, but at the end of the day, it's worth it. So now, right here, when I went to my room, look at that, I'm so excited right there that my computer is doing great. The One of the fans is acting up a little, uh, a little weird, that fan, the second fan, you can see it turning on and off. Um, so right here, I went ahead and take the computer to my room where... Uh, that's where I do all the hardware, I mean, all the testing, the drivers and everything. You can see right here, I got the RAM inserted in there. But like I said, I had it on the wrong place. I didn't notice that until I was uh, trying to post. And I was getting that error that my RAM was not compatible with this motherboard. So I started freaking out. I got like sad and I, I said, oh my God, what happened? This RAM is not for this motherboard. <laughs> I really wanted to cry at the moment. So look, look at that fan right there. That fan is really sexy. But the whole theme of this um, build, it's like purplish, you know, the black LEDs that I put in there. Look at that, it's the Corsair H100, the Corsair Dominator, RAM, DDR4, my uh, 
two-way SLI GTX 980 from Asus. I mean, guys, building computers, putting them together is like having a baby kind of thing. <laughs> Anyways, so that right there, I was getting the error that my RAM was bad, but I corrected that. So, thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, let me know. The review of this computer is coming up. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, hit the like and comment. That helps me a lot. And that is my best pay.